I have a YouTube channel. You can look at them. Amen. Amen. You see a uh, video we catch an iguana and stuff. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Let us turn in our Bible to Forest Kings, uh, <coughs> Forest Kings chapter 17 in our Bible. Forest Kings chapter 17. Last week, Sunday night, we start uh, the message on the benefit of seeking the Lord for us. And there is benefit in seeking the Lord for us. Amen. You know, in this Christian life, if you are serving God and you don't expect benefit, you wouldn't get it probably. Amen. Or probably God might be merciful and just throw it in your lap anyway. But you must expect, you know, benefits and so on. Now that we serve in God primarily or, or um, force in our life for the benefits, amen. But uh, God cannot go back on his words, amen, church. Um, we'll read from verse 1. Straight down, when the Lord tells us stop, we'll stop. How about that, amen? amen. So... First Kings chapter uh, 17 from verse 1. The Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, Behold whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain three years, but according to my word. And the, Lord, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Chirrut, that is before Jordan, and it shall be that thou hast, shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens, or the canny crow, to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Chirrut, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread, just as the Lord said, and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. <clears throat> and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. You know, sometime in our life, our brook will dry up, but God can take you to the, to the next stage in your Christian life. Amen? Amen. Because, he had, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidion, and dwelt there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he had came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink and as she was going to fetch it he called to her and said bring me I pray thee a morsel of bread in thy hand and she said as the Lord thy God liveth I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise and behold I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die and Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. And thus said the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Father God, we give you glory, honor, and praise today. We thank you, Lord, that you are, we are covered with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Pray that you'll hide me behind the cross. And Father God, minister through me to your people so the heart can be encouraged. Father God, tonight, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may take your seat tonight. And uh, again, uh, the message here is uh, 
the benefits of seeking the Lord first. Amen. May I say, God desire is for us to seek Him first. In uh, Matthew 6, 33, the Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall, added, shall be added unto you. He was telling those that follow Him to seek Him first because, you know, uh, people tend to seek the things, the necessary things of life first, and then put God maybe second or third, or maybe last in their life. But he was telling them that to put him forth and, uh, and so on. See God's kingdom. Seeking God's kingdom it mean that you have to get an aircraft or airplane and, and, and fly it to heaven to seek after God or a spaceship to seek after God or a ladder or something. Amen? Are you listening today? Uh, I remember that the people that uh, were building in, in the Valley of Shinar or the feel of Shinar, the Tower of Babel, they were building to, they want to reach God, amen? And we cannot reach God the wrong way, amen? We have to reach Him the right way through Jesus Christ. But seeking God's kingdom is find whatever you can do in the house of God through the local church and do it, amen? Are listening? Whatever you can do to bring a, a blessing, um, to the church or to, to bring lost souls to the church or um, whatever you can do to encourage the believers and so on all that is part of seeking the kingdom of God amen seek him for us in our life a businessman he called me a few days ago and uh, his desire is to at least once a week to help us with some snack for one of the service to everyone adults and so on you know all that is part of seeking god kingdom amen, amen. when god blesses god wants us to give back a part and so on but last week we learned that solomon uh he was a great king and what made him a great king was his spiritual abilities in first second chronicles and so on we wouldn't go to the scripture because we been there last week but as God called him to be king of Israel he he asked the Lord for the spiritual abilities amen he asked the Lord for uh, wisdom knowledge and understanding and so on um, to lead the people of God you know he had everything else he had riches he had horses and chariots soldiers and weapon and army and so on but boy he know that without the spiritual ability he cannot lead and uh, may I say in leadership we learned last week that um, we need spiritual ability but we are look at spiritual stability tonight amen and, and under the benefit of seeking the Lord first we are look at spiritual stability what can make us spiritually stable or spiritually strong we'll look at a few things but i want to go to psalm 60 holy place in the bible and turn to psalm 68 19 psalms chapter 68 and verse 19 the bible say in psalm 68 19 blessed be the lord who daily loaded us with what benefits even the God of our salvation amen to breathe the very oxygen that we breathe today is a benefit is not so amen. do you realize that yeah. amen do you realize like for instance on, on Mount Everest they are part that they cannot have oxygen do you realize that there are parts that when they go up at the peak the, the oxygen is so heavy and so on amen there is part uh, in the sky, you know, as, as aircraft fly, you know, if they don't have oxygen, actually the engine can cut off or the plane can drop and so on. And it's a benefit to breathe the very oxygen that we are breathing today. It's a benefit to live, to see another day and so on. 
As we are sitting here a few seconds ago, there are many paths on to eternity, some probably to eternal life with the Lord, some to eternal damnation, amen, to hell and so on. But David uh, rehearsed to us in Psalm 68, 19, he said, Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits and so on. We see here that Elijah in 1 Kings 17, Elijah was serving the Lord and there was a wicked king that gone away from the uh, presence, from the work of the Lord, the power of God was not in Israel and so on and God desired for every king that ever reigned and ruled in Egypt to have the power and presence of God in their life, amen? In fact, one king did not have the power and presence of God upon his life because of his backslidden state and God removed him. His name was Saul. Anybody remember that king name? His name was Saul, the first king of Israel. And God replaced him with David and so on, a man after God's own heart. But Ahab was the king in those days and his wife's name was Jezebel. Amen? Man, do you want a wife that her name is Jezebel? Anybody want a wife? What about a wife? Do you want a, a husband named uh, Lazarus? No, amen? But boy, today we have the Jezebel spirit out there in the world and so on. You don't get caught up with that, amen? But um, Jezebel and Ahab, they, they walk away from the presence of God. They forsook the, the ways of God and so on. And God had a man's servant, Elijah. Elijah was not a wealthy man. He was a very poor man. And uh, if, if you are poor, nothing wrong with that really. Amen. If it's God will. But Elijah was clothed in, in camel hair, the Bible say. And so on. And um, Elijah lived among the woods a lot. And uh, at this time... God commanded him to go and speak to, to Ahab and, um, and told him that there wouldn't be rain nor dew in three years and so forth. And um, why he went and did that and then God, uh, he was discouraged for a while, but God told him a verse too and the word of the Lord came unto him saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself. By the brook Chirith. So guess what? He went and told the king, hey, there wouldn't be rain for three years and there wouldn't be dew. You know, if there is no rain, we understand that. But if there is no dew, that is something else. Amen? Mean that everything will dry up. Amen? We traveled a couple hundred miles to Savannah's recently, but it was not dry. Because there was Jew, amen? But I recall what Jim said, there are places in Africa you can drive miles and miles and there is nothing but dirt and dust, amen? Because I think he said three times a year in those places, places it will rain for just about 15 minutes. 15 minutes, three times, amen? So imagine that and those places are desert. But imagine three years without rain and dew, the place became desert and, and dried and without water and so forth. But God still sustained his man's servant. And that is a lesson, the spiritual uh, lesson out of that. God can still sustain you as you serve him. Are you with me? As a child of God, God can sustain you. If though there is no rain, amen. And uh, God direct him to the brook, but the brook end up dry, dry up, amen. The Bible says in verse 7, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. You know, folks, a time in our Christian life, our brooks might be dry. But God allow our brooks to dry to prove to us that He is still there. Amen. You see, God took care of him even though there was no rain. 
God proved himself to Elijah. Then when the brook get dry, God took care of him. Not only of him, but of a, a widow woman. This woman didn't have a husband. She had a son and so on. But God said, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, that belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a, wo a widow woman there to sustain thee. The lesson here is that God already command a woman. Isn't that amazing? God command that woman before he saw that woman. God command that woman before she saw the man of God. You see, I believe God has blessing for us even before we need it. I listen tonight. I recall uh, eight years ago when the Lord led me to start this work in your scheme. I tell the Lord, I'll pay the bill through my salary as I work driving taxi. But the same week, I was fired from my job. Amen? And, um, and so forth. And I was kind of murmuring, where would the money come from? Where would the, how would the bill be paid? I was even asking, you know, the Lord, wonder if I made a wrong move and the Lord is trying to stop me. You know, and I found out as I went and checked my email that a good friend who was my boss in St. Martin sent a hundred thousand dollars to me. Five hundred US, amen. You see, the Lord already paid five months in advance, even before I start. Isn't God amazing, God? Yeah. And the spiritual lesson there is, hey, you serve the Lord, God have everything in control. Even though when your brook is dry, when you cannot understand it. Amen? But, you know, as the man of God uh, approached the widow, he asked her for a drink of water then. He told her, hey, bake me, uh, bring me a cake, bake me a cake for us. You see in verse 13, and Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake for us and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Amen. You see, uh, some, some preacher preach or teach, that the church should put the man of God first. And there is nothing wrong with that. Amen. It is hard for me even to preach that way. Amen. Because I like to seek the Lord. But here we see that the benefit of seeking the Lord first in our life. There is benefits beyond our human imagination. The benefits might roll on to you. And it might roll off from you to your children. To your grandchildren, to your great grandchildren. I are listening tonight, church. Amen. And there are many times in the Bible where people just did a little thing and uh, it pleased the Lord. And because of that, God blessed them for all eternity. Like the harlot Rahab. Y'all remember her story? She took in the two spies, she took care of them, she hired them, even though when it was illegal. To be in Jericho, she hide them, amen, and she fed them. And boy, she is mentioned in the hall, the fame of Hal, uh, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, amen. She is mentioned there, and she got saved, and her household got saved, all because she seek the Lord first, amen. Uh, she had her condition and uh, her her lifestyle. But well, let me tell you, I believe God changed her heart after she was uh, confronted with the spies. Amen? Amen. Seeking the Lord for us. The spiritual, we see spiritual stability here. What is, how can you uh, get spiritual stability uh, to stable you in times of hardship? In times when there are more... Uh, uh, question than answers and times when you cannot understand what is happening with your life 
You know, you are serving the Lord, you are faithful to Him, but in times, of, there are difficult times blowing your direction. What can you do? You need to follow the Word of God. You need to have faith in the Lord. Amen? Uh, the acrostic of faith is forsaken all, I trust Him. Amen? That is how it's spelled out. Uh, forsaken all, I trust Him. You must, have, you must start by faith. First of all, you must get saved, but then you must start by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, if we can go there. Hebrews chapter 11 and, uh, and verse 1, we'll see in the Bible. You find it? Yeah. It's on the screen. Amen. Hebrews 11, 1, it said, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It means in our mind, whatever is your desire, whatever is your need, you must see them. Amen? You must have it in your imagination. In fact, in Psalms 47 and verse 4, the Bible says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You must have them on your heart as a desire. Amen. You need a, you need a fancy house, car, business. You must have that. It must be in your heart. And by faith, you must believe that God will give you these things. Amen. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, I can see this microphone here. This is the evidence of it. But if I have my desires, I cannot see it visible or I cannot see it before me. But guess what? Uh, in the spiritual aspect, there is evidence. Because my faith relies on, on God to provide those things that are necessary for my life. Amen. May I say this with a woman by faith. She believed the word of God. Because Elijah's word was God's word. Amen. Remember that Elijah com com command God. I mean God command Elijah to go and speak to the woman. It's not so church. So his word was God's word. Amen. Uh, so we see you must start by faith. But Hebrews 10 toward 8, Hebrews 10 toward 8, the Bible say, Now the just shall live by what? Faith. By faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You see, God have pleasure in someone that tried to live by faith. Are you listening? You come to church, you are living by faith. You, you depend upon God, you are living by faith. And God said, He will take pleasure in the soul that live by faith. Amen. So you must start off by faith. You must continue by faith. Never turn back, never draw back yourself. No matter what is the circumstances and the situation, it might be beyond your control. You might not understand it all. But you need to press on. You need to press forward. God desires for you to serve Him. You know, week in and week out. Every day of our life, we should make it count for the Lord. I listen to tonight, church. Every day of our life, we should make it count for the Lord. You see, reading our Bible and praying, we are doing ourselves a favor. But doing outward things, being a good testimony, and uh, witnessing and so on, in some form, is doing something for the Lord. This woman, she had spiritual, for a moment and time in her life, or her, her spiritual life was not stable. Because she started to reason. She started to put her reasoning together. She was walking by what? By sight for a while. She said, hey, man of God, I, I just have the last in my barrel. I just have the last of, of oil in my cruise. 
the last few sticks and we may eat this, we may die, I'll listen tonight. But Elijah said, hey, go and do it. Go and bake it and give me for us. Amen. You see, there's benefit in giving God for us. God needs for us in our time. Can you say time tonight? God needs for us in our talents. Whatever we can do for him. God needs for us in our treasures. Amen. You see, a lot of times we think that only 10% God needs. But really God needs everything from us. Amen. And uh, God can provide. We need to give with freedom. That is what Corinthians said. We should give with freedom and so on. Amen. Give it God, as God prospers us. We are no longer living under uh, the law, but under grace. So we should give uh, gracefully and so on. Amen. So God desire for us to, uh, to, to have uh, you know, spiritual stability. God desire for us uh, our time, our talent, treasure, and His temple, which is our body and so on. For, for a moment in time, the widow woman didn't have spiritual stability. Her faith kind of, uh, you know, wavered. Amen. But here she, she recalled the word. She recalled to mind the word of God is, is truth. And she relied on God's word. Are you relying on God's word tonight? Do you have spiritual stability in times of limitation? In times, you know... Of circumstances and situation beyond your control. We need to anchor in God's word and have spiritual stability. Knowing that God will never fail us. I with me tonight. Say amen church. Amen. amen. You see uh, the Bible say here. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You know I want God to have pleasure in me. I want God to, to say, well done, my beloved son. And it might not always be that way, but wherever you fail, you must get up and go again. Let's turn to James chapter 2 and verse 18. After Hebrews is the book of James chapter 2 and verse 18. The Bible says here, Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my what? Works. works. You know, if people have faith, they'll want to come to church every time the door is open. Are you with me tonight? If people have faith, they'll want to give and want to serve the Lord. Are you listening tonight? Amen. Why I recall in my life, I give everything at times that I have. Now, I'm not telling you to do this, but we must have that mindset that everything we have belongs to Jesus Christ. And we must have, there must be evidence of our faith, and the evidence of our faith comes from our actions. I listen, church, our attitude, our ambitiousness toward the Lord, toward the things of the Lord, and so forth. Amen? And... Um, we see that the woman for, for a while, she didn't have that faith. She tried to reason things out, saying, hey, I am a woman of limitation in every aspect. But then she listened to the word of God. What should we do in times when we do not have spiritual stability? We should listen to God's word. We should go to God's word and say, God, you have all the answer. What should I do? I don't want to figure it out, Lord, whether I should serve you or not. I, I don't want to figure it out. I don't want to reason it out. But God, I want to faith it out. What do you, your word say, Lord? Does your word say I should leave everything and come to church Sunday morning? Does your word say that every morning I should wake up and pray and see God? That is what God's word says. It's not so. Morning. And, and noon and evening I will call upon the Lord. Is not so. Does God's word say, you know, when I have spare time, then I should come? No, no. But you know what? At times our, uh, our uh, 
spiritual at times we there's an absence of spiritual stability but God wants us to pick ourselves up and go go on amen don't let the past hinder you for the future are listening but let the past be a lesson for your future are listening church James 2 and verse 20 the Bible say here but will thou but will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. So people that have faith, or Christian people should be people of faith. And if we have faith, we should have works. Now works cannot save us. Is not so. Dead. The Bible say, uh, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Amen. Amen. But the evidence of our faith is works, is not so. I believe over the years the evidence of my faith is what is this facility, my family. And boy, there have been times in my life that my faith, there was an absence of stability. Amen. I did some unwise things, stupid things in my life. You know, for the last 10 years, if I could recall. But God been merciful. Amen. You just have to get up and shake it off and keep on going again. Amen. Uh, you know, people might see you that you do not have spiritual stability. But guess what? Uh, God can help you. Amen. God know your heart and God want to help you. Chapter 2 and verse 26 of uh, James chapter 2 and verse 26. The Bible says, For as the body is without the spirit, is dead so faith without works is dead also so we must have faith amen and so forth now back to the widow woman's story the man of God came along with the word of God and she had she gained spiritual stability you know means she became stable in the word of God and she just said okay I will listen to the word of God I'll go and make you first. And boy, we see the result. It's not so. What is the result? In uh, 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse uh, 14 and 15, it says, For thus say the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying, of Elijah and she and he and her house did eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah amen church I have a word for you today I believe this church will be the greatest church in Guyana in planting churches in soul winning and so forth I believe that this church will send out many preachers I believe so you know <clears throat> everybody who misbehave have to go in that room all right amen I believe that God have a great blessing for this church will you be a part of that in your own Christian life is there spiritual stability God don't want us to reason it out or figure it out. But there must be works. There must be works from our heart, from us, that prove to God how much faith we have. Let us stand tonight. And there is benefit of those that seek the Lord for us. Amen. The benefits of those that seek the Lord for us. We see that this widow woman seek the Lord for us. I heard in time past people say, I am too poor to give. You ever heard that? I heard that before. I heard in time past people say, oh, I am too old to give. I heard in time past people say, oh, I don't have a husband. And that's a reason not to give. But oh, may the widow woman teach us a spiritual lesson. That whatever is the circumstances and situation, 
we need to have spiritual stability. Amen. Let us bow our head and close our eyes tonight.